Okay. So with that said, let's go over our major component of our meeting in our club, which is blueprinting and 3D modeling. Now, we've kind of been discussing about 3D modeling for quite a time now, but this, this week and especially next week, these three weeks for February, we really got to work hard with 3D modeling because as I said, we're starting to get official mentors trying to help us progress forward. We're going to get corporations, well, a company that's going to help us with the whole prototyping and with the whole advice with actually building the device, we're going to start getting into those things. And we don't want to let them behind. We be, This is like, we got to move forward. So everyone kind of understands that, you know, starting from now on, everyone's going to have to get busy, basically. Okay. So I'm sure if you guys seen this before, complete part wrist, specifically the wrist, W124, specifically the fingers, F1 and F2, F3. Um, for F1 and F2, they're just going to be the same. Left, right, um, of course, you have to adjust for the pins, but basically they're going to have to be the same design. Now, one feedback I did get from while talking to a doctor was she talked about how most specificity of the fingers and wrist patients already have their finger um, hands closed, and it's hard for them to open it. So we have to design... Um, the grip section, basically, F1. F1 needs to pay attention so that whatever design you guys come up with, it's easy easy for the patients to actually slip in. And for F3 hand cover, try to make it so that it's detachable. It's not exactly mandatory, but if it is detachable, it will be easier for patients. Because again, as you guys said, if you have something like a teardrop shape, all they have to do is just kind of like you know, kind of like let the wedge of the teardrop have them settle in. So make sure hand F3 hand cover is removable and F1 water drop shape, as you guys said, that's a great idea. I showed, um, I showed her our like our complex shape, like the one that looks like a weird pillar. And she said, it's fine to have any type of shape for that, but just make sure the top is pointy so that the patients can just slip their hand in. Oh, and by the way, for those you guys don't know who our mentor who I'm talking about, uh, her name is Dr. Cover Rubius. Um, she works for St. Jude Pain and Rehabilitation. So, you know, feel free to contact her if I'm unavailable. But here's our general diagram for the wrists. As I said, I'm just going to go over this quickly. Um, wrist one, the green part, it's just a central back plate, the backbone of our structure. Wrist two, it's the covering where we're going to put mostly going to put internal things inside and it's just going to be a box with a weird looking oval on top of it. Wrist three, it's the one that will actually move the wrist, the red part. And wrist four, they're going to be the clamps that hold down on your hand. Going to fingers, F1 is the thing you actually grab onto the grip, the water drop shape we talked about. F2, it's the base that holds the fit hand in so it doesn't slip down. F3, it's the hand covers. Make sure that F3 is detachable, okay? That's pretty important. Um, I'm going to, of course, introduce this later, but maybe draw like a rectangular insertion pin and draw an insertion hole on F1, but I'll get to that later. Okay, so before I start, do you guys, do all of you guys know what specific part you got? Like what part you guys are responsible for? Yep. If you guys don't, can you just give me like a quick, can you just let me know quickly? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll say it anyways, just so that, you know, whoever is watching this video later can know it. But just go over, just go over, um, quickly on what parts you got. Jake, you're going to get F1 and F2. Ethan, you're going to get F3. Junso, you're going to get wrist one, wrist two. Michael, you're going to get wrist three, wrist four. Okay, everyone got it? Okay. Quickly going over these parts, 
you know, I've, we've already gone over this before. Everyone knows what each part represents, right? And what, sh what each part should do. Can you guys quickly let me know if there is a part you don't understand? Jake, is there something you want to talk about? Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, can you type it in chat if you have something? Uh, no, I'm all good. Okay. Was my mic like being or something? Yeah. D don't worry about it. I can hear you now. Okay. So this is our blueprint slides. It, it's a slide filled with all of our dimension sheets and blueprints that needs to, you know, be there. Um, let's see. Which one should I go? Okay. Let's actually go over with base one. So let me stop sharing this screen. And let me open my actual files. Okay, so starting with Thursday, we're actually going to have our students and our members actually start counting this. I want to make sure every one of you guys know exactly how to cut each part so that whenever someone has a question or they come to an obstacle, they know exact, you guys know exactly how to help them. So while I'm doing these, please let me know if there's anything you don't understand. I'll go over them. And since a lot of our members aren't exactly familiar with Autodesk either, I'll, you know, it's perfectly fine if you ask me like the same question twice so that I can like re-clarify. So with that said, let's go over some of our compartments. Okay. From now on, I'll kind of go over some of these structures and how to actually CAD them so that you guys know exactly what to do. Some structures are simple enough, so I'm kind of going to skip over them. So if you guys have any questions, like if I'm going to um, skip F3 and you have a question in F3, let me know. Like, for example, F uh, wrist 4 is something I'm going to skip because it's very easy to cat. All you have to do is mind your dimensions. If you have a question on wrist 4, let me know. But let's go over wrist 1 first. I do not have questions about wrist four, by the way. Just so okay, you know. that's good. Yeah, it, it's just like I mean, it's just a circle in a box, right? Oh uh, no, wrist four is um, the one that holds. Or your is hand that in. the arm grip? Oh, that's even easier. That's just two rectangles. Well, yeah, for the starters, you know, it's going to get more complex. But actually, the, all the wrist ones are pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, I have one thing for ones wrist are a lot one. More complex. Yeah, I, there's okay. one thing for wrist one. I uh, wrist one, it it's a little bit. Hey, are you because, sharing your screen? And I uh, just no. can't see it. No. I uh, it's taking some time to launch. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. I'm kind of. I'm going to go over them through Scratch. So guys, please have this PowerPoint open, OK? The one I just shared with you guys. If you guys want it, I'll share it one more again in the Discord link. But please look over these, because you're not going to understand anything without them. It's very important. OK. Uh, Jake, th this part's fine. This is I'm going over wrist stuff first, so don't worry much about it. I mean, it's good that you're paying attention, but this part um, is primarily for Jinso and Michael. Okay, so uh, Jinso, you can see my screen? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Autodesk is taking quite a time today. Okay. Jinso and Michael, are you, are you in the slides or can you see it? Yep. Slides and except it's loaded. Yeah, it's just being slow. Uh, okay, I yeah. can see your screen and I'm on the slide. Okay, good. Uh, wrist one, there is, it's not just a semicircle. It's kind of like a semicircle and a square on the sides. So I just wanted to quickly go over that. 
What is wrong? I'm going to try to um, model wrist one and two. Uh huh. But it's really difficult. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, that's the whole reason why I wanted to like hold this meeting. So, you know, none of you guys have, are struggling. Okay. So everyone can see my screen, right? I don't want to like, I'm sorry if I keep asking. I just want to make sure. Everyone see my screen good? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, see your I'm, I'm going to have to collapse the whole uh, video tab for Zoom. So I, I can't really see you guys. So you guys kind of have to give me like audio cues. Okay. So XY plane, of course, because we're looking at from top down. Uh, the very first thing for wrist one is the actual circle. So first of all, construction line, of course, build any circle, dimension. Now the dimension for the circle is very important. I want you to guys to have precise measurements for this. And the dimension for this circle is six inches. So let's do that real quick. So you first start off with the circle. Then I want you to guys, let's see. Okay. Then I want you to guys to draw a line from one end to the other. And then I want you to draw a rectangle with three points. One point here, one point here, and any point here. Let's see, distance. Actually, no, never mind. Just draw any line, any line like this, and draw any line from the top. Okay, top to bottom, okay. And make sure your constraints are done properly. Uh, gosh, this is hard to see with the whole zoom thing. Okay. Make these and these perpendicular. There we go. Draw a rectangle, one side here, one point here, and one point here. And then the dimension you have to do, 6.0, okay. Dimension you have to do is from, oh. Make sure to draw a line from here to here. Yeah, just, just draw like kind of like this cross anyways, because it's gonna help you with the whole dimension parts a little bit easier. So just do that. And let's see, uh, dimension from middle of the circle to the end. Okay, dimension from, from middle of the circle to the bottom should be 6.036. Okay, and it's obviously gonna try and give you like this constraint error. Let's see, that needs to be five inches. It's a little bit easier. And the distance from the center should be, okay. Oh, center. Oh, it's forcibly. Okay, you don't want to scratch that. Okay. Let's start out with our circle again. Make it six inches. Rectangle should be easier. Okay, any rectangle there. My gosh, what is up with? Okay, there we go. Line, make these parallel. Okay, good. 6.03. Six point zero three. Okay. Oh boy. And we gotta make sure that. Actually, I think we're done. Yeah. This needs to be five point six three one. Remember, um, this five point six three one. One of the one of the students asked this question. They asked me like, "Oh, why did you put it there?" I put it there because um. What was it called? It was a, it accounts for the space on the left and right. Draw another line. You see how this that line kind of like fusses up? You don't want that. You want to make sure that this yellow line is on the center. And of course you want to connect these two lines if it will let me do that. Okay, what's the problem here? 
zero to six. Huh, that's interesting. Huh, that's a good question. How did I cat this? Constraints. Did you do it like oh. 3 a.m. or something? Yeah, I did yeah, I did all of this in 3 a.m. Don't worry, I'll I'll I'm gonna edit this video so none of this part actually shows up, but um Well, I wish you could edit my brain so I wasn't so confused. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Let's okay. Cool. Let's go over wrist one. Okay, so let's go over wrist one. So first of all, you want to start off with x y plane, of course. Circle, make it six inches, and then I want you to grab a rectangle with three points. Make sure all your lines are construction for now. And here's a trick. You don't want to draw the line. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. If you, Whenever you draw an uh, unput line and you draw and you put a dimension on it, it'll kind of start messing up. So what you want to do is get this point and that point, and you want to make this distance, it's, which is in the dimension sheet, 6.036. There we go. Perfect. And now you want this dimension to be 5.631. These two numbers are very, very important. So I do not want you guys to mess this up. These two numbers are quite important. You wanna make sure both lines are touching the circle, of course. And when you are done, you're gonna get a shape kind of like this. Now, to check if you've done everything right, get a dimension of one of these and you'll get five inches. If you get five inches, you know you've done everything correctly. You see how when I try to get a dimension of this, it kind of gave me this error? This is not exactly an error. Read what it says. Adding this dimension will overconstrain the sketch. Choose a step to create a driven dimension. Driven means it's automatic. Because of the constraints I put, this has to be five inches. That's why the circle needs to be six inches. This specifically needs to be 6.036, and this specifically has to be 5.631. This is kind of important. Uh, my wrist people, did you get this process? Yep, got it. <laughs> okay, so that's bulk of the uh, hard work. Yeah, what's up, Michael? Sorry, I, I missed that. I had, someone's asking me for help with math. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I got distracted. That's fine. So rectangle, you want to choose. Oh, actually, guess, at least this isn't my part. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, it's my I'm on, Yeah, it's his. I'm on wrist three and four. So okay. I guess I could, uh, I should be in charge of the whole wrist production thing. So I should try to pay Well, yeah, better. please still do try to pay attention since when June is unavailable, you'll have to take his work on as well. Got it? Of course. Okay. So now that we have that done, Let's go over the arc. How do you draw this arc? Well, make sure you choose center point. I want you to choose this center. I want you to choose any random point and then just draw a random arc. It really does not matter. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. There we go. Now, with the whole arc thing, it's a little bit confusing, so I want you guys to pay attention. There's a reason why I didn't put it into construction. So draw one line connecting from one end to this end, one end from here to there. Okay. Now what you want to do is press cancel and then make sure this thing is 10 inches. That's also a preset dimension. You have to follow it. And make sure that this also has to be 10 inches. Now, since I kind of draw like a perpendicular arc, I should say. It automatically put 10 inches, but that's not really true. I can move around this thing quite a lot. So one thing you do have to watch out is also making sure that 
from here to the end of the circle also needs to be seven inches. This is just kind of like a way to check your cat to see if you did everything correctly. Now comes the squares. Wait, Jacob. Yeah, what's up? For the line that connects the circle, like the middle of the circle and the arc. Yeah. When I put the dimension, do I have to um, pick the construct cons the line or the points? Because uh, if the I click the line, it gives me like the distance between the point and the x x axis. Okay. Well, here's one way to do it. Let me show you. One way to do it is you click on the center over here. You see how it highlights like that? And you click the other center and you just click anywhere and it should give it to you like this. Got it? The other center? Can you, can you show me again? Please. This center and this point. Um, wait, let me try to try it. You got it? Uh, it doesn't give me a dim dimension, I don't know why. <laughs> I know, you have to put it in. No, like, does it give me... So when I pre press the two dots on the middle of, of the circle and the tip of the arc, Yeah. It doesn't show any dimension. I know, I know, I told I you, type, you have to click... It. Okay, here, I, I told you, you have to click over here to click over here and you need to click anywhere like click on the okay, okay. here like that did you get it yeah got it okay now are you able to do it mm -hmm. okay then you want to create the squares or the rectangles more precisely and these are the things that will kind of help you out with the whole shaping Make sure that dimension for this thing is two inches and make sure this thing over here is also two inches. Your arc is kind of still kind of wobbly over here, so let's fix that. I should have an angle, or did I use... Okay, looks like I used something else. Okay, there we go. Okay, I, I kind of understand what I'm doing. Okay, so... What you want to do is grab this point and this point, and you'll get this specific number. Now, don't care about that number. It's not important. You click on this part and that part, and you'll also get a number. You see how these numbers are different? That's how you know the arc is not equal. Because you see how if I try to, like, okay, well, I can't move it now. But when these, uh, the arc isn't totally balanced right now. It's kind of, like, shifted a little bit to the side. That's why when you click on this dimension, you have to click on this or type in D9 or whatever this measurement is. This is kind of like, can you unmute your mic? Okay, so this is kind of like uh, using variables, but you don't exactly have to put in variables. All you have to do is click on dimensions and then click on this line and you'll get D9. Got it? You see how now, now everything's equal? Okay, this part's pretty important because you'll for sure have to balance your arc or it's going to look wobbly because now it's blue. Blue means, you know, everything's set up, all the constraints are good. So now all I have to do is just finish the sketch. Just click on the constructions line you drew. Like that. Like this. Like that. And like this. Got it? Jun, so this is your part. So you, did you get everything with wrist one? Um, I might need some help after the meeting, meeting, but for now, yes. Okay. So you finish your sketch. All you have to do is extrude just a little bit. Uh, we're going to put 0 0.25 because that's just our uniform sheet metal we will assume that, you know, whatever material we're using, it's going to be 0 0.25, or maybe it's going to be 0 0.15. But yeah, that's wrist one. When it's all done, it should kind of look like a fan. But yeah. Michael, did you also get everything with wrist one? Because when June Sun's unavailable, you're going to have to take over too. So you kind of got the gist of it? Uh, not really, but I'll just stay with him after the meeting. Okay. Well, um, which, okay, which part do you guys not get? 
Let me just say, just say you went too fast for us to understand. So. Yeah, I, I can't even use the program right now. It's still downloading. Okay. Although it's almost done. Alrighty. Well, I mean, you guys don't have to cat it right now. I'm just kind of like going over yeah, how I know. to do it. Um. But um, yeah, don't worry. Uh, if you guys see, what I'm trying to do is basically like put this video on YouTube so that when you guys do have the time to actually cat this, you can like watch this video again and, you know, kind of see what I'm doing. But Junso, which specific part do you not get? Um, you just said I was trying to cat, like, with you, but... Oh, no, no, no don't, because I'm going really that. fast. I know I'm just kind of, like, going over general directions or, like, sequences, which you have to do. Don't actually do it now, because I'm, like, doing it really fast. Yeah. I'm just trying to go over, like, is there anything you don't know how to do? Like, um, do you not know how to, dr like, did you not understand how I got from, you know, or, like, for example, oh, I didn't understand how you got equal arcs or something like that. Uh, did you understand what I did with the arc thing? Uh, yes. Okay. I'll go over it just one more time because it's important. So after you draw your arc, don't worry too much about it. Just draw two rectangles with three points. Rectangle with three points. One in the center, one in the tip of the arc, and one just anywhere. It can be as fat as this. One in the center, one in the tip of the arc. Any, you know, It's fine if it looks really like this. Now, our arc is kind of like unbalanced. We want to make sure everything's right. We want this, this is uh, two inches, and that's also two inches. Now it's still unbalanced. You see how it's kind of like facing a little bit weirdly, like it's shifting towards the left. We don't want that. So, and this is the most important part of this um, drawing. Okay, well, this isn't gonna work out. From here to there. Okay, well, that's not exactly what I wanted. Okay. Okay, there we go. From here to here, we have a certain dimension. And this, well, let's fix this up so that, you know, it's a looking a little bit more clean. And we can get this dimension from the intersection of the circle from this point to the circle, we're going to get some large number. It's fine because it's looking really unequal right now. Actually, I think we might have a constraint error here because it's not letting me constrain it. Yeah, uh, it doesn't look like it lines up. Yeah. It's all Sometimes Autodesk does, does it. It looks like the point is there, but then in reality, it's like 0. 0, 0.01 millimeter off, so the program just like, you know, just can't comprehend it at all. So if that does happen, just draw like a line, like intersection here to that part, and you get like a, and then when you do dimensions, you should be able to just select the line. Wow, Autodesk is really slow for me today. But you get the general idea. 7.394, remember that's not our actual measurement. This is just a random measurement you will get. For you, it might be different. Um, see, you see, okay, this is actually pretty important. Whenever you do have a constraint error with CAD, which is just like, it, don't, it won't let me select a point, what you have to do is get a line, get the intersection, and then just draw it like that. That's one way to reduce errors. Because then when you click dimension, it'll let you choose that point. I don't know why Autodesk does this. This is just something, you know, the program does. So and now more lines, less errors? Yeah, basically. Okay. That's the whole cool. um, benefit with construction lines. You don't have to worry much, too much about it. Okay, so, oh, and uh, I kind of erased this while I was doing this, but of course, this also needs to be seven inches. Everyone cool with that? Yep. Okay. Is there anything else I need to go over? Let me see if I missed anything. Two inches, two inches. Same length, 
because now if I move this around, okay, yeah. See, this was what I was talking about. You need an arc with a very specific, um, very specific endpoints because now if you look at it, we can have an arc that's as small as like this, but then the machine will still be able to rotate. The purpose of you catting it like this is because when we get a specific dimension, like let's say our doctor wants, um, what's a feasible number? 135 degrees of movement, we can just give them this. So, you know, please cat this correctly. Okay, so looks like we have this part done. Uh, Junso, did you have trouble with risk two as well? Yeah, I had trouble like putting the circle and the rectangle together or something. Okay, that's fine. Let's go over it. Don't try to like keep up with me because I'm just going over things like really generally and fast. But if you have any questions with what I just did, please let me know, okay? If you need like specific help, I'll, you know, of course, get to you later. Okay. Module cover. Alrighty, let's go over this. Uh, this is a little bit easier. Of course, you start out with a circle, six inches, because it needs to cover our base. And now, same protocol as before. You want a rectangle, just drawn anyway. You want dimension for this was. Well, let's just get that real quick. 5.631. Remember, you have to keep that number in mind. It's very important. And then you want to make sure the circle and this point touches. And there we go. Technically, if you have these two things, you don't need to worry about anything else because it will automatically give you the number you want. But since here, you want 5 inches. Okay, let's do that. You want, actually, no. Yeah. Let's just set this as five inches since that's what we want. And if you do a calculation over here, you'll automatically get our number we're looking for 6.036. So if you cut everything with the right dimensions, the very last dimension, it's going to give it to you automatically. So now that we have this, it's smooth sailing from here. All you have to do is create these rectangles. It could be any size. This is, um, you know, pretty basic. You don't need to worry about much about anything. Just create these three rectangles. And at the very end, if you look in the formula sheet, I specified everything needs to be 0 0.5. So all I need to do is 0 0.5. This needs to be 0 0.5 and that needs to be 0 0.5. Oh, did we get a constraint error over here? Oh, okay. Looks like this thing is bothering. Can't really look at it. Okay, let's see what's going on. Okay, so it's just not touching. Then you just kind of have to do this. And... Do we get five inches? Okay, there we go. Uh, five inches total from here to here. Zero point, okay. Oh, I see. Looks, um, since we used, yeah, since we used rectangle with three points, it's probably just freaking out with the, the whole constraints. So how about this? Let's draw two, okay, let's draw two of them first. Set them to 0 0.5 set them to 0 0.5. And I'm assuming this method should be a little bit more easier. Let's set this from here to here. The distance needs to be 0 0.5, of course. And the distance from here to here also needs to be 0 0.5. This should make things a little bit easier, but let uh, me know. What are you pressing to edit the dimensions? Uh, just click on it. Ah. So I click on this button and this button, and I need, sometimes it will stretch out like this, but sometimes it won't. You click on it. 
and then it automatically pops up. Then you press 0 0.5 and you press enter. Got it? Ah, yes, yes, I do. Okay. Then you want to get a rectangle, one from here, one from here, and one from there. And do we do everything correctly? This should give us 0 0.5. There we go. Now all you have to do is just draw over them with non-construction lines. Remember, if I have this thing on, it's going to give me a dotted line, which doesn't mean it's there. I have to unclick this and draw solid lines like that to know it's actually there. So now that we have all our construction lines done, all we have to do is just connect them together into the shape I specified. And for the circle, what you actually have to do instead of drawing a circle is use an arc. Get an arc point center over here, get one point over here, and if it doesn't bug out on me, it should be able to do that. There we go. We used a circle for a construction line because it's easier to see, but remember that now that you have everything done, all you have to do is just get an arc, excuse me, center point here, one point here, and another point there. Got it? Yep. Junsa, was there, what, which part, did you like, do you now understand how to do wrist two now? Oh, I just didn't know how to like connect the rectangle with the circle. Oh, well, I see. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty important part. Uh, remember, once you set this distance, here, let me try to show, put this a little bit further. Once you set this distance as 5.631, it will automatically do a lot of things for you. Once you set circle radius as 6 inches and this as 5.631, it should be smooth sailing. Because this 5.631, I, I kind of had to use like a calculator sheet to figure this number out. So it should be a little bit easier on you. So after you do that, all you have to do is just extrude it. Let's put it as 0 0.25. Now from here, it's very easy. All you have to do is click start 2D sketch again, click this surface and draw the rectangles like we just did. You know, it's the exact same thing we just did. So draw one end from here, one end from here, and you scroll down to here. Then, oh, by the way, you don't have to use a three points. You could also use like two points if you really want, like that. There and that. Now we want to make sure everything is 0 0.25 like you've done before. Isn't it 0 0.5? Uh, it's 0 0.25, or actually 0 0.5, yeah. Yeah, looks like it, all of this is 0 0.5. Let's set three points, one over here, one over here, one over here. We want to make sure the distance from here is 0 0.5. There we go. After you do that, all you have to do is extrude this. Like that. And you might be asking, how long do I have to extrude it by? Well, if you look in the slides, I say you have to extrude it by 2.50. But remember, our structure over here is already 0 0.5 meters thick. So you have to take that into account. All you have to do is just stretch it by two inches. Got it? Yep. Okay. Obviously. So, this will become much more detailed, correct? Yeah, of course. Um, see, when you do these, you can have like a couple ideas for them. Like for example, let's say you talk with your group and you say, actually, let's make our armrest adjustable. Then you can create a new sketch over here and then you could draw a line. And this is all hypothetical, by the way. I'm not saying you guys need to do this. It's just kind of like, being a little creative. You could draw circles like this. Okay, yeah. And then you can oh. say, yeah, let's make it adjustable. And let's just, and since we're using 0 0.25 as our universal um, 
screw radius, I should say. We could just do that. And you can talk with your group and say, oh, let's make it so that this is 0 0.5 inches and this is 0 0.5 again. And this is also 0 0.5. So that people who have thick arms or thin arms can, you know, use these dials to, you know, but you know, that you kind of get like how that's like an idea you can implement. Yep. Okay, things like that. And um, one thing I do want to show you that I kind of went over last time is doing a little bit more detailing. Some detailing you could do is fillet, of course to make it a little bit, you know, look a little bit more nicer. Now, don't worry about doing the bottom because we're going to have to screw it in or it's going to it's going to be glued basically to the actual structure of uh wrist one. So, this is one way to, you know, make it a little bit more detailed. Like I said, you could change this to 0 0.5 or 0 0.1, you know to make it so that the device is a little bit safer so it doesn't have sharp corners. If you want to maybe drill a hole over here just to show that, hey, this is the mo uh, movement of our axis of our circle, you could also do that. If you maybe want to drill holes over here and put like a knob or a dial, that's also good. It kind of shows to our mentor that, hey, this is how the patient's going to control the device. So little things like that. Feel free to put them in. Um, so risk two, am I good with risk two? Yep. Okay. Now let's actually go over. Actually, Michael, let's go for risk three. Do you think, yeah, let's definitely go for risk three. Risk three is a yeah, little yeah. bit more harder. Yeah, I'll just. Okay. So first of all, our circle is always six inches. Please remember that it's just, I don't know, something I just thought was good enough to hold the hand. Six inches um, circle. I don't, I don't know about that, actually. Some people do what? have big, six inches for a hand. Oh, no, it's for your um, arm. I mean. Okay, yeah, that, that's probably. I mean, I hope your wrist isn't larger than six inches. Yeah, uh, mine's only three, so we should be fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I do have, like, thin wrists, but I don't think anyone has, or I hope no one has six-inch wrists. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, six inches is a pretty long, like, distance. It's, like, you know, it's, it's kind of, like, really long. So, anyways, now that we have the six-inch circle done, we have to draw our line. Draw any line just from... Actually, yeah. Draw any line from the circle, one point here, one point here. Kind of do like the same cross as we did. Sometimes it will try to like automatically latch on. Sometimes this is useful, sometimes this is zone. This is why you always use constraints. Uh, Michael, what I just did was called constraining. I clicked on this thing called perpendicular constraint over here. All I did was click on this line and click on that line, and it will automatically set it as perpendicular lines. It's kind of a useful so we're tool. Just going to make the line you draw into the perfect perpendicular uh, chord. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And now that we have that done, let's see. The dimension should be four inches, so let's do that. This needs to be four inches. And now to account for, actually, no. We don't, okay, let's try to avoid um, having these type of, yeah. So make sure you leave some space out here, just so that, you know, it's a little bit easier for you to CAD, because <laughs> There is something called like a like a dimension sheet over here. You can check to see everything and you can manually edit in. But just so that it's a little bit easier for us to see, let's just kind of like, you know, 
make it a little bit easier for us to CAD. Whoa, what was that? Oh, you my just attached your line to the circle. Yeah, uh, it's probably because I was like touching the trim tool. Anyways, mm. we want to make sure this distance is 0 0.896. Okay. What is going and on? And that would be on the dimension sheet, right? Yeah, it, it's already there. Um, looks like we have a small problem. Oh. Oh, never mind. We just got to make this really long. That needs to be 10 inches. Alrighty, and now this just set it as any small number so it's a little bit easier for you to see. And of course, this also needs to be the same as this over here. Accept. Okay. So now you kind of run into a problem with constraining. Because you set this constraint as 0 0.5. You can't really do anything. So let's try to delete this. Oh, or we could just yeah, we could just do this. This is also an option. Make sure this is also zero point eight nine six. There we go. And now we have a perfect dimension we want. You see how I kind of like shifted things around? You see how there isn't a space here? So what I did was I just literally just like shifted this over. That's an option. It's easier for you to cat that way so that you could get this at 0 0.896. Got it? So I guess so. Okay. Sorry there's so much beeping. A bunch of other people are trying to talk to me. If you yeah, can hear that. So anyway... Uh, yeah, yeah, I do understand. Okay, that's good. So I could just move it outside of the circle to mm -hmm. set a dimension? Yeah, to make it a little bit easier for you to CAD. Oh boy, what is... Oh yeah, never mind. We forgot to... Okay. And of course, you know, you'll run into this mistake. Make sure that once you do everything with uh, construction lines, make sure to draw the lines over here so... The program recognizes them. Constraint lines are just kind of like imaginary lines. The computer thinks it's not actually there. It's for the sake of our eyes. So always make sure to draw actual physical lines over them. So there we go. Now that we have those, we extrude it. And if you see in the diagram, I should probably tell you. Uh, shouldn't you also draw a line to complete the circle so that the circle's height can be shorter than the rectangular bits? Because that's how it looks um, in the diagram. Or I mean, is there a way to do it from there? Yeah, it's a little bit complex because you'll have to use this yeah, this tool, but I don't really want you guys to use it. So don't worry, I'll get to that part later. So there should be two inches. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll, okay, I'll show you what I mean. It's a little bit easier to do it this way. So when you do extrude it, you want to make it 2.5 because that's how high our, yeah, there we go. That's how, how, how high our um, cover is going to be. Now, yeah. Michael, that's a good point. How, what, do we do, what do we do about the circle? Well, it's way easier if you just draw another circle like this, finish sketch, and all you have to do is extrude this backwards 0 0.5. See that? Oh, yeah, that works. Yeah, it's a little bit easier that way. So now that we have that done, let's draw the two holes where our specificity of the fingers are going to go into. Don't worry, I already specified this. The distance from, uh, there we go. Just draw like an imaginary rectangle. Use construction lines, of course. There we go. This distance, oh, never mind. This distance should be 2.5. And now the two circles we're going to draw, just draw them how big you want. As I said, the whole size is always going to be 
0 0.25, but let's put 0 0.3. It's probably because it's the connector. We want to make it a little bit more thicker. And like I specified on the dimension mm -hmm. sheet, you want to make the distance to be 1.5. And you want also with this, the distance should be 1.5. Okay, this is a really good example. You said how I talked about Autodesk kind of makes it look like it's touching the line, but it doesn't. Like how it looks like it's touching the line, but it doesn't. Then it's, you yeah. kind of yeah, yeah then you kind of have to take care of it like. This line has to touch, there we go. This line has to touch this thing. There we go. And it automatically does it for you. And now you know 100% that it's touching. So well, now that we- Wouldn't you know anyway by putting in the dimensions or do you have to always make sure that that's correct? Um, you'll know because it'll give you like a bunch of errors and you'll go like, okay, what the heck did I do wrong? But uh, sometimes you just well, kind of catch it. Does that then? What was that? You know why it does that? Uh, no, it's just an Autodesk thing. Huh. Well, that's strange considering it's a very expensive program. Yeah. Uh, computers are very stupid. Even if we, even if we think it's touching it, the computer might ask, like, "What if it was zero point zero 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 three millimeters off?" You know, yeah, yeah. What case. if it? What if it wasn't touching? Yeah, it? I know. Yeah. Okay. That. That's so. Oh. Oh, well, you know, oh, yeah, you see how it got like an error? I forgot to do one thing and that's yep. putting an actual solid line. So take off your construction line over here and just draw them. And put so in the actual the, circles. Yeah. yeah, so the computer recognizes them. And once you do that, all you have to do is just extrude these backwards oh. one inches. I guess I do get it now. So we're all good. All righty, that's good. And don't worry, I'm going to give you guys these files later so that if you have any, like, backtracing you want to do, you can also cool. do that. I'm also going to post this video on YouTube so you guys can easily figure yeah. it out. Okay, uh, I'm sure you get Rist 4, Michael. It's... it's yes, the, yes. So that After you're... seeing what... I, I get it, what I need to do now, and it's very simple to apply what I've learned here to that. Yeah. I just need to pull the dimensions. Mm -hmm. Risk 3 is kind of like the hard part, so, you know, Risk 4 should be a little bit easy. Okay, so that's with the Risk group. Junso and Michael. I know, Michael, you got it. Junso, you got, have you, do you kind of like get a general direction of what you need to do for Risk 1 and Risk 2? Uh, yeah, I got it. Okay, if you have small, like, problems in the way, I can help you with that. Okay, so Ethan and Jake. Jake, you still with us? Yeah, I'm good. I'm in, I have better reception now. Okay. Ethan and Jake, let's go over specificity of the fingers, the hardest part. Now, this part, you're kind of going to have to get a little bit more creative. It's a little bit harder for you guys to do. So, you know, let's try our best. Very first thing, you guys are going to have to choose XY plane because you're going to use, um, not extrude, but rotate. So you think of, actually, you know, let's, uh, let's choose a different, yeah, let's choose YZ plane. You rarely choose this, but let's just do it for the sake of comprehension. You guys have a complicated task, and I'm not going to lie to you. This is going to be very hard. This is probably the hardest part. Fingers one. I don't exactly know how I should phrase this, but we're going to need a very intricate shape where it's ergonomic, but also patients who have their hands stiff and can also put their fingers on it. Who has fingers one? Was it Ethan or Jake? Jake. I think I have fingers one, yeah. Okay, that's good. Jake, you're going to have to do some interesting um, creative problem solving with the whole uh, water drop shape. Let me show you a couple options. Now, there's no specific dimensions for fingers one. Fingers one and fingers two, three are going to have to communicate a lot which dimensions. But generally for like 
holes and like little bearings, you only have to worry about like 0 0.3, 0 0.25. No worries for that. But specifically the fingers, F1, you're going to run into some creative problem solving challenges. So here's one way you could do it. You could draw an arc that's kind of like that. And then what you could do is kind of like cut it off from here like that. And you might be wondering, well, what do I do exactly with this? Well, you draw a line here. Let's actually redo this so you guys can have a little bit better of an understanding. Okay. So everything must be in construction just so that it's a little bit more organized. Let's draw just to draw like a very general rectangle. What you can do, and this is just one of the options, is draw an arc. And you might be wondering, okay, what do I do with this? Well, we could also draw another line like that and draw another line like this. And then you can try to cut this by half to make it a little bit more thinner. This is one of the options. It's gonna be pretty fat. Like it's gonna be looking really fat, like kind of like that, but it is an option. One other option is to extend the semicircle. Let me show you what I mean. Make it 180 degrees. Since that's a little too fat, what you can try to do, and this is one idea I came up with, is making kind of like a cylinder, basically. Now, Autodesk won't recognize these two as touching, so let's just do that just in case. There we go. And then what you can do is edit the dimensions of this to be a little bit more smaller, 0 0.5. Oops, that's not exactly what I wanted. But here, let's actually come up with a little bit more of a less realistic scenario. Mm. How about this? Yeah, that should work out. As I said, there's no exact measurement or order of directions for you guys, which is, you know, what it makes the, the hard part. So I'm just going to try my best to show you guys some alternatives you guys could do or things you could come up with. So now that we have this complex shape, what you can do is coat the ends like this and get the arc from this end to that end and kind of draw something like this. And then you need to revolve this and let's just set it angle 180 degrees. Oh, what's going on? Jinso, did you try revolving? Can you try revolve right now? Because I don't know why, but it's just not working for me right now. Um, sure. Yeah, every time I revolve, it just does not seem to work. Yeah, I was ha I was having problems with it. I got I finally got it to work, but like it wasn't what I needed, but it was just a pain. Cause like I would yeah, finish exactly. It. Yeah, I would finish the sketch and then I'll go to so you click that and then click one of the edges on the actual like on the design. And that's what I got for when you go to Axis. Oh, shoot. Yeah, Ethan, that's a good point. Yeah, how could I forget this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, everyone pay attention. This is very important. You don't want to forget this like me. Oh, oh I got okay. that. <laughs> so once you click Revolve, you need to click the Axis of Rotation. How could I forget this? Wow, Mr. Dave is going to be really mad at me. Yeah, you need to click the Axis of Rotation. You see how when I clicked Revolve, it automatically highlighted that surface for you? you? What you need to click is what axis do I want it to spin? If I click, that's why I clicked on this axis because I want it to go like around. So I click on that axis and we don't want it. Let's just do something like angle and let's just set it to 180 degrees. 
Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, I should not have forgotten that. Sorry, guys. But yeah, that's how you use Revolve. Jake, you kind of got this? Yeah, I see what you're doing. Yeah, so Jake, this is one of the shapes you could use. Obviously, you can tinker around with dimensions, make it a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit shorter. But this is one of the options you have. Because if you have like an art, like this kind of shape is going to be a little bit more easier to grab on than just a regular pole. So think of it like that. Here's another option. And we're going to dive into territory of pretty hard catting stuff because it's not really guaranteed you're going to succeed. This is the part where it's kind of like, well, if you're lucky, you might come up with a good design. So let's give it a little bit of clearance space of 0 0.25, just so that, well, let's put it 0 0.3, just so that if we, well, actually, let's make it a little bit more realistic. Um, zero, okay, one inches. By the way, whatever you're catting this, especially fingers people, please have a ruler nearby. You could measure your hand kind of get like a general gist of how long does each part need to be. So we set that as one inches and let's set that 10 inches a little bit too big. Let's just look at our hand, five inches, assuming some people have bigger hands. And now, actually, yeah, let's just make the 0 0.5 just for the sake of clarity. Excuse me. Now you kind of run into a challenge of what shape do I need this to be? Specifically, the wrist people, you do not have to know any of this, but specifically the fingers people, you're going to have to want to go over this. This is called a spline with a control vertex. It's a little bit easier if you have a control vertex because you can kind of get a general gist of how are things going to turn out. Is it going to be as horrible or, you know, a little bit horrible or things like that. So you see how I kind of like make complex lines. This is give or take. Sometimes you'll have a good line that you want, but it depends on where you put your control vector. You see how I put my control vector over here? I can get like a nice solid, you know, spline over here. That's something you kind of want to experiment with. And of course, this is one problem with splines and me saying computers are stupid. They don't know when to stop. You have to click this. So let's just say, Jake, you're thinking of maybe drawing like a water bottle shape. Once you do build this client, I want you to press this button and it will give you this. Now to make this into an actual line and not a construction line, do not redo that. It will be extremely hard for you. Just click on this line. It'll kind of like highlight itself with this yellow dot showing up and click on that. You can also do that with other lines, but usually I say for just so that the computer knows it's like an actual line and not a construction line, I say redo it. But this is like the case of not redoing it. So Jake, this is one example you could do. So now that we have that done, let's revolve this just so that's easier for you guys to conceptualize. Angle, 180 degrees. Jake, this is also a design you could do. And then we could drill one hole here and then drill a hole here so that it covers. You kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'll just experiment with the spline thing possibly and also the arch just, just to try and get a uh, shape that might work, I guess. Yeah, try experimenting with it. That's the best I can tell it to you. There's no right or wrong with this specific design. For wrist people, there's always going to be a right or wrong because there's you know, dimensions are specifically calculated so that it fits the whole design. Fingers one, you're going to have to, you know, try your best basically with the whole experimentation, seeing what shape will basically work the best. So good luck on you that. F2 is incredibly simple. If you're able to do F1, you should for sure be able to do F2. F2 is just like a base plate. All you have to do is draw like a bottom plate bottom square and that's literally it you just draw a square and you just extrude it a little bit that's all there is to it yeah f2 now, is pretty simple i don't have any yeah. questions okay oh by the way jake I'm, I'm so sorry do you have any questions or you know things you want to ask beforehand 
I think I'm good. Uh, before this, I was kind of curious, like, how you would get, I guess, um, it to be thinner at the top so the patient can slide their hand over it. But it looks like when you do the revolve thing with the arches and stuff, it kind of already does that for you. Yeah. If you, like, tinker around with the spline tool and make this top a little bit more sharp, that's also an option you could do. Make it, like, a proper water drop shape. It's going to be hard, not tinkering it around. But, of course, it's all trial and error. And, you know, I wish the best of luck to you with that. Okay. So with that said, wrist or fingers three. Ethan, this is your part. This is also a little bit complicated because you're kind of going to have to go with Jake. But let's say Jake uses this idea, which is most likely what he's going to be going to use because it's, how should I say this, stylistically the best option we have. Let's say Jake goes with kind of like the shape where it's curved on the top so that patients can easily put their hand in. For part six, um, fingers three. By the way, Ethan, you can listen to me, right? Pay attention. Wait, so hold on. So I do have one question. That Do you know how like to bend something? Cause like, I do know my part has to like curve. Uh -huh. So that's why I tried doing the revolve feature, but I found out like it wasn't like, cause mine has to, pretty much go along the circle, but like, it's very hard to like, you, I can't really revolve it. Cause like, it'll be too sharp. But do you know how to like, make it follow a circle or stuff? Cause like. Of course I do. I'll show you. Because trying to, yeah. Cause I have like the guard, like created like that shape, uh -huh. but I don't know how to like curve it. Like I was trying to bend it like at the middle point, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to do that at all. Okay, it's fine. You'll also have like creative liberties with your design, but let me show you one way you could do it. Uh, you don't have to copy down everything, but this is just kind of like a brief example. You're going to need clearance space of at least one or two inches over here because you want to cover it. You know, you're going to want to make this whole thing detachable here. Let me collapse my zoom window so I can see my, there we go. And now you want to make this maybe like 0 0.1 inches. It's going to be very thin. It's going to be like a thin cover they'll have to put on. What you want to do with the arc, let's say you're thinking of, actually, let's not do an arc. Let's do a spline. Especially to the finger people, I know spline is a very weird tool to use. It's kind of unpredictable, but it's just kind of, you just kind of have to, you know, trial and error it the best way you can. So let's say Ethan comes up with a similar design Jake had, like this, where it's kind of like a curved design. Like that. Of course, when Ethan does it, he'll, ne he'll need to get dimensions like this and dimensions of that. Like that. And Ethan will have to experiment with, you know, what's an option he has and basically a bunch of things. So Ethan, once you do get the spline function done, and of course, Ethan, when you put, when you draw your spline, make sure to talk with Jake because you have to be involved with, you know, how Jake's shape is going to be. So once you have that finished, Ethan, you have a variety of options. Let's say we want to make our finger guard cylindrical that like very well covers our fingers. It's probably not going to be that way, but let's say you do want to make that way. You press revolve, right? You click both surfaces and Ethan, this is very important. So I wanted to pay attention. What you need to, yeah, why, did, okay, so I'm sorry. Let me just, why is this one inch? This is supposed to be like 0 0.2. Okay. Oh boy. Um, you said how I like splines are a little bit unpredictable. This is like what I mean exactly. Okay, there we go. That, you know what? That's fine. It's good enough. So Ethan, let's say you come up with like a curved shape. You have two options. One, to completely make it circular or two, uh, make it a little bit more simple. One of the things you could do is just extrude this like that. Yeah. I did that, and then I was trying to, like, round that. Yeah. 
And if you do want to round it, you could use a fillet and just kind of like, you know, do it like that. Kind of well, see what I, I mean? Didn't, I didn't mean like that. Like, how big does, like, does the guard have to cover the entire hand or just sections of it? See, um, that's kind of up to you. Um, you, you can, you can do both, basically. But this, I'm going to recommend this part just because it's going to be easier for manufacturing, modeling, and all of that. It's going to be a little bit more easier. Mm -hmm. But if you do want to make it cover everything, here's an option. And please pay attention because Revolve is always confusing as it yeah. just tricked me. So you click on both of these things, and the thing you want to press is this line over here. Yeah, I know. Actually, why is it not you letting you You have to click Access for it. So you have to so not oh, click Access and then click Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There you go. And you want to choose angle, and let's just say you don't want to make this 180 Yeah, I did like 70-ish or like... Well, not 70, but, that, but maybe yeah, like but 120. Like, okay, so, all right. Kind of like that. Okay, so, you so I did, ha I did like have this. that, like that looking shape. Okay, yeah, see, that's good enough. But okay. then if you want to take like creative liberties and make it a little bit more squarish, that's fine. Let me show you what I mean by that, because, you know, it's obviously going to be easier for me to show this to you. Okay. Can you see my assembly? Uh-huh. You see how this specific part, the one you're doing, wrist, the, um, fingers three, the gray part, you see how it's a square on the top? Mm -hmm. See, but if you do enough careful planning where, you know, you kind of like figure out the distance between this one and that one, this design also works. It doesn't always have to be like a complicated um, semicircle, basically. So, you know, that's just one possibility. Got it? Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. So with that said... Ethan, do you mind unmuting your mic? Okay, thank you. It's just because of recording. The Zoom recording function is really wobbly. Okay, so with that said, we're pretty much done with every single part we need to cut. Before I go, is there any, like, general questions on how to tackle each part? I'm not saying, like, do you have any specific questions, but, like, general questions like, how do I even tackle catting this? Like, any questions? No? Okay. Well, with that said, you guys are free to go, but if you have any specific questions, please uh, feel free to ask them. But yeah, if you guys don't have any questions, you guys are free to go. Well, uh, my dad just asks if I'm still in the meeting, and I guess that's a no. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, have a good night. Yeah, you too. Good luck with modeling. Yeah. Um, Jacob, which point did I have to connect in order for the arc to be right angled, I guess? Symmetry. Oh, are you looking at, okay, which design? Wrist yeah, part one. one. Oh, yeah, wrist one. Okay. All right, well, thank you. I'm going to um, log off. I'll message you if I run into any problems. Okay, no problem. Take care. Have a good night. Okay, so wrist one. Let me just kind of like go over it a little bit more slowly. So you want to create a circle, okay? Mm -hmm. Make sure it's construction. You want to make sure it's six inches. Mm -hmm. And then you want to create a rectangle. Three points. Any point, any point, any point. And then you want to draw a line from top of the circle to the bottom of the circle. Got it? Mm -hmm. Make sure this is perpendicular. And then 
write this bottom one first. I calculated everything for you. So all you have to do is write 5.631. And then you have to click on this side in 0.5 inches. That's it for the whole circle in the box, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you want to draw your arc. What you want to do is grab an arc, make sure it's center point, put the center, any, any big, however big you want, it's fine. Get a line from the center, connect it. Center, connect it. Mm -hmm. This needs to be 10 inches. Mm -hmm. That thing also got to be 10 inches, but that's fine. It's already set that way. Now, you want to grab a rectangle. One point here, one point tip, and one point anywhere. One point here, one point tip, one point anywhere. Then, I want you to grab this line, go from top of the rectangle to the intersection. Top of the rectangle to the intersection. And then grab the dimension. Circle? With the line? Yeah, like this. Like this line. Here to here. And then you want to grab this line to this line. Click here, and you'll get some random number. Don't press anything here, just press this. And boom, it should work. Make sure this is two inches. Why can't I edit this? Oh boy, make sure this is two inches. Oh, why can't I make it two inches? What's wrong? Or was it one inch? Dimension value. Yeah. We didn't have to edit the dimension that two inch one before we connect the lines with the circle. Oh uh, yeah, that's kind of yeah, that's probably what we have to do. Two inches and two inches. Grab the intersection. There we go. Dimension and make sure it's a intersection. This is um, just a random number. You want to make it this. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Um. Okay. Wait. When I get the dimension of the right side, yeah, it says I cannot like fix the dimension. I can change the dimension. It what do you mean? Gives me like the. The parentheses one. Which one? Um. The. Are you at the square rectangle? yet? Are you at the rectangle yet? Mm -hmm. I'm at the rectangle. I got the dimension for the left side. The intersection. June, did you click on the intersection because it's not this intersection? It's this intersection. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I, wait. Okay, show, show me again. Don't grab this. This intersection. I'm saying this intersection. The circle. Okay, All right, let me make sure. Uh, okay. Uh, my goodness. Can I share my screen? Because yeah. Oh, can you able me to do it? Okay, you should be able to now. 
so you're talking this intersection here, the circle. You got to zoom out. I, I can't, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, the intersection. Of a circle right here. Yeah. To here. Yep. Just, you should get any random number, that's fine. And, uh, and then do the right side. Yep. Yeah, and then, oh, what? If we do that, using different numbers. Then click on click on 8.452, the left, and then mm -hmm. click on 8.1, and click on that, yeah. There you go. Is it because of this? Oh, yes. Why did you wait? Why did you know. set what that? Did I, add that? I don't know what that, why I have that. I can't delete that. Yeah, but that's fine. If you don't do that, it should be fine. Okay. All right. Okay, Got it? Mm -hmm. Got it. All righty. Take care. Mm -hmm. You too.